Bernhardt blazes back into the front of this group. Earnhardt is the leader. Earnhardt reported as the leader. Let's go to Ned Jarrett. Back in the pits once again, and the hood goes up on the car. They have already changed all eight spark plugs. It did not cure the problem they had. Now they're going to other parts of the ignition, hopefully to find the problem. And there's your leader as he's flying down straight away from our race vision camera. Gives you just some of the feeling that is in racing a car in the lead here at Daytona. Oh, tag on the wall of turn four. Multiple crashes coming up. Oh, right. We have a crash in turn number four, as you can see. Several cars out of control in the fourth turn, sliding, slithering into the wall, bouncing into the infield. No one seems upside down. Car number 50 Bruce just Hill. coming to rest. From another viewpoint, out of turn four, down off the 31-degree banking, you see them spinning, sliding, trying to ease the cars There's through. There's David, David Pearson, number 21 in there, too. Pearson's cars crashed in the front, crashed in the rear. Parsons trying to fight his way up. One car touches the wall of the start. You can see him grinding along the wall for just a moment. That was car number 90. Ricky Rudd just racing the wall for a second, and now he's back and rolling. But that will change the aerodynamics on that car some. Now, Donnie Allison scoots out in front. He's trying to make up some time. Another caution here would run him around and have him make up a lap. These more experienced drivers, like the Allison brothers, of course, can, can work the yellow flags to their advantage and actually gain a lap under the caution if they get it just right and if the pace car comes out in the right place. Now it's going to get scary. I tell you, with so many rookies mixed among the Masters, so many of the top cars have fallen by the wayside in the early going, it could get really rough from here on. Look at this jam session for the lead. This is simply incredible automobile racing. No margin for error and no speed limit. Car number 27, drafting off car number one. Benny Parsons is in the lead. He is drafting behind. And car number one, which is one lap down. See them seesaw back and forth at over 190 miles an hour. Down the back straight away. Number two, Earnhardt going to second place, getting beneath Neil Bonnet. Back in turns three and four, working lap nine. Oh, crash at turn four. Neil Bonnet. Neil Bonnet. Spinning. Harry Gant out of control at number 12. In the wall. Gant goes back to the traffic. And the car just missing him. My goodness. What an incredible Harry Gant. What does it feel like to run into a wall at about 190 miles an hour? Seemed like you're doing 200 right there at the last minute. You got faster when you hit that grass. Well, here's Harry Gant, one of the top rookie contenders for the 1979 season. Dale Yarbrough is only one lap down. There's 10 cars on the lead lap, and Dale Yarbrough is only one lap down. If he can pull this off again, he's already done it twice. He could be back there on the lead lap with Donnie Allison, who's also gained laps under the yellow flag. A blown engine. Another car goes up in smoke. I think it's Gary Ballou's car. Car number 82 dropping down on the inside rail. That's Paul Cruz. Carborough trying to make up the lap. This is the thing. If Cale can lead across the start finish line, he's picked up that lap. Caution is coming on. Here's Cale trying to make up the lap. If Donnie Allison gets back in front of him, he'll put him on the lap down. They must race here at the start finish line. Cale Yarborough. Here's Donnie Allison trying to get the lap back on a slingshot. Set up. He's back in the lap with the leaders. Twelve cars now in the lead lap. As we move down to the end, look at this crowd. Watching. Absolutely incredible exhibition of determination. And that perfected racing finesse that has marked Kelly Arborough as one of the greatest champions in racing. From three laps down, he's back on his way back into second position. Kelly Arborough is about to make his assault on Donnie Allison. First, Daytona 500. To go away and come back on this photo finish today, I'll tell you, it may be that close. Ned Jarrett in the Junior Johnson pits. Ned. Junior Kale seems to be content running right on Donnie Allison's bumper. Is he going to run that way to the end, or what is your strategy? 
Well, I think Kel will stay there probably to the last lap, and then he'll try to get Donnie either down the back stretch or coming off the fourth turn. Donnie Allison must be one nervous man now, just wondering what's going on in that beady brain of old Kale Yarbrough. And now the strategy begins. They have slowed it down a bit. They're working with thinking about how they will run the last lap that will decide it all. It is going to be perhaps just one roll of the dice. You have to be absolutely right or it's second place. Now let's look at the difference between the second place automobile and you'll see here the interval back to the third place car as they come through the tri-oval in front of this massive crowd, over 100,000, here they come. They're pulling away fast. They really are a successful duo together. And I think one of the things that's slowing these three down is that Foyt and Petty are dragging Darrell Waltrip along who's got engine trouble. Two drivers who crashed earlier both remarkably brought their cars back in the race. Were figured completely out of it. Blacks down. They worked the caution flag. Talk about an avenging shadow. Just imagine having him hovering around there behind you for 20 laps right on your bumper. Knowing on the last lap he's going to make that swoop. To take him past you and lead the race on the one lap that it really counts. Petty running in third, Waltrip to fourth, A.J. Foyt to fifth. White flag is out, one lap to go. This is the last lap. Stand by for Two of the greatest fiddling here, fidgeting with first place. Passing some of the strikes just in the last lap. Trying to take it home, it's all come down to this. Out of turn two, Donnie Allison in first. Where will Kale make his move? He comes to the inside. Donnie Allison throws the block. Petty, the great master, has just recorded his 186th career, and, and there's a fight between Cale Yarborough and Donnie Allison. The Teppers overflowing. They're angry. They know they have lost, and what a bitter defeat. A couple of very hard men, very hardly upset. And Bobby Allison has stopped by his brother to help. There's Bobby Allison's car, number 15. They're leading them away. Darrell, Cale Yarborough there. Very upset, very upset. It's difficult to tell from here, but whatever happened shouldn't really have happened. All right, let's go to Brock Yates. Here he comes. What a man. Could this, could this have happened any better? <laughs> Kiss from his wife. <laughs> Richard, could you believe it? Have you been a lot of races? Was there anyone ever weirder finish than this one? Well, I tell you, I lost some this close, but this is the first time I remember in a long time I won one this close. I tell you, it, it's just unbelievable. You know, come down here last week and uh, Kyle won, and we come down here and look up and win this thing. Hey, Steve, what's your doctor gonna say? <laughs> I don't. I ain't worried about the doctor, baby. I'm feeling. I'm feeling good, no matter what he's. I guess. A man who has lost 40% of his stomach in the past two or three months, who drove hurt all last year, who hasn't had a win in a long time, comes home the winner of the 21st annual Daytona 504.